This video is a really good explanation of the Joel's Army teaching, and I will put a link below. I only edited out a little at the beginning where he was covering other topics, and I just left it as it is. So, thanks for watching. Show you the heresy, the heresy of Joel's army ideology in these last days. This is scary stuff, people. So hang on to your seats. Now, I did a little research on Ryan Wyatt. Apparently, Ryan Wyatt is a is a uh, musician, and he has a he has a, an audio CD called Overshadowing. And I'm just looking at the cover art here, and ah, uh, boy, I don't know. I just see a I see an angel here that I ought not be seeing. But anyway, here is uh, a description of this audio CD by Ryan Wyatt and John Belt. It was an awesome blessing to do this project, The Overshadowing and the Oil of Heaven with Ryan Wyatt. I have known Ryan Wyatt for just a short time, but we hit it off right away. There is a synergy. That term implies, that term synergy is one of those uh, new age terms from the Aquarian Conspiracy that talks about the mingling of the, of the two kingdoms, the sons of God, the daughters of men. Uh, so there's a synergy of the difference of the different anointings that God has placed in the body of Christ. Ryan is one that I do flow with, remember Ray K, in that he carries a weighty, intimate, prophetic healing anointing on his life. This shows in this project very clearly. This was one of the most enjoyable experiences I've had in the context of a project. You will experience a deep river of intimacy and passion for God as we did this completely off the cuff. This is a completely spontaneous project except for one cut that turned out to be quite a heavenly flowing song that was perfect for Ryan's title cut. If you've not heard of Ryan Wyatt, you can rest assured that the eye of God is on this man. I'm going to show you the eye of God. There it is right there. Um, they, he's bragging about the fact they went into this studio and they said, what are we going to do? Let's just start playing music. You have to understand some things. That music has such a, a powerful force. Music is what angels do. They sing. Lucifer was created with the workmanship of tabrets and pipes. Lucifer himself was a musical instrument. Now, I want to explain a little bit about this Joel's army concept. And I'm going to end up going to the book of Joel. We're going to compare some scriptures here so that you will understand exactly when you start hearing people talking about Joel's army, manifest sons of God, new breed, latter rain, latter days movements, uh, Latter, all these prophetic movements, all these impartation movements, there are kingdom now ideologies, dominion theology, people that say, you know, if we just take over Congress and the White House for Christianity, then we'll take over the whole world. And it's this idea at its, at its uh, surface level, it's the idea that says that God has ordained us then to take over the world by force and hand it over to Jesus so he can rule and reign for a thousand years. This is a regrouping of what used to be called post-millennialism. Now, there are a lot of people that are involved in this thing. Too many for me to mention in this broadcast. But I want, I want to bring some people to your attention. And you take one of these people and find out who's associated with them. And then you'll start finding out who is associated with Joel's army and all of this stuff. And what I'm going to show you today you're going to see that this is a setup. It is a setup, number one, to lead churches to worship the beast. That's the first thing. And wait till you find out who's associated with it. Number two, it is a setup to lead churches to persecute King James Bible believing Christians. You're going to see it. Here's one of the dominant leaders in the latter reign, Joel's army movement. Benny Hinn, the Catholic mystic guy that he is. Oh, by the way, I just found out today, his wife, his wife is going to hand it to him in the divorce settlement. We found out, they live in Orange County, California. We found out that they have, that she's filed for divorce on this guy. I wonder if he can name her and claim her back. 
Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so we know Benny Hinn's part of it, okay? When you start hearing these guys talk about uh, this great harvest that's coming and how the wealth of the world is going to be handed over to Christians and how this new reformation is going to... Rick Warren's part of this too, just in a different light. This new reformation, this new great awakening. When you start hearing these guys talk about this, listen up. Because they are sliding some things in and they're leading people through their television ministries and their everything else, through their big money marketing ministries, they're leading church people into this idea that everything's going to be ours one of these days and we're going to take over and take dominion. Uh, we talked about, how about Rick Joyner? You remember him? He is, uh, let me pull some pictures up of him here. He is with Morning Stars Ministries. He's the one. He's the one that did this cell phone anointing. You remember that, and how everybody was dialing up their cell phones and passing anointing to people. He's the one that has all these wild, wacky, weirdo stuff going on in his church. I found out that Rick Joyner is a Knight of Malta. The Knights of Malta is a Roman Catholic organization. Here's what Rick Joyner said about this great awakening that's going to happen. What is about to come upon the earth is not just a revival or another awakening. It is a veritable revolution. This vision was given in order to begin to awaken those who are destined to radically change the course and even the very definition of Christianity. Take a look at that. The dismantling of organizations and disbanding of some works will be a positive and exhilarating experience for the Lord's faithful servants. What you read into that is we have to tear down the old in order to bring in the new. That's Baphomet right there. The Lord will raise up a great company of prophets, teachers, pastors, and apostles that will be of the spirit of Phineas. Now I want you to think about this. Phineas was the guy, if you remember, he took a javelin and he thrust through this guy and his wife because he married the wrong woman. That's what he's talking about. There is a violence that is behind this that is scary. This ministry of Phineas will save congregations and at times even whole nations. Nations will tremble at the mention of their name. That's what Rick Joyner said. Now, this whole Phineas idea is linked with the Christian identity movement and Christian so-called terrorism. What is Christian identity? Christian identity, and there are various breeds of this, what is called Christian identity, um, Anglo-Israel, British Israel concept. It basically says that if you're white Caucasian, you're a good old boy. Well, then you must be true Israel. You are actually an Israelite from the ten lost tribes. You just don't know it. You need to claim your identity. And oh, by the way, 90% of these Christian identity groups do not believe for a second that anybody in the world is going to go to heaven except them, including blacks, Hispanics, Orientals, you name it, Jews especially. They're not going. They're dog people and they cannot be saved. God hates that. God hates that doctrine, and I do too. I don't like it. But this Phineas concept is linked with the Christian identity movement. In fact, one guy by the name of Paul Hill, an anti-abortion activist, was convicted of murdering Dr. John Baynard Britton and his escort outside of Pensacola, Florida, abortion clinic in 1994. Hill had written an essay advocating the commission of Phineas Actions a year before. In other words, at the heart of what some of these people believe is the idea that we have to use violence in order to bring forth the kingdom of God. Be careful. Now, I mentioned earlier that Rick Joyner, Rick Joyner was a Knight of Malta, a Catholic chivalrous organization basically run by the Pope, run by the Vatican. And if it's run by the Vatican, then it's governed by Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Here is Rick Joyner on his website telling exactly why he became a Knights of Malta. He says, this remains a frequently asked question, so I want to answer it as completely as I can. The names that are left out in this account are because I have not had a chance to ask them if I could use their names. So he admits that he joined the Knights of Malta. 
And then he says, am I, starting, am I trying to start an elite group of Christians? And he says, absolutely. I will not apologize for the fact that I'm on a quest to find Christians who will rise above the lukewarm and fearful to be true knights of the cross, true nobility and the earth that will not compromise the biblical standards for morality, integrity. What do you mean, like Todd Bentley? And commitment to sound biblical truth. And I do believe that this is what the Lord intends for all of his people to be. But the fact is, such are becoming increasingly rare. He admits that he's trying to start a new elite group of Christians. Here is a picture of Rick Joyner in his Knights of Malta regalia. And oh, here is a picture of the Grand Master of the Knights of Malta kissing the Pope's ring. It goes all the way to the top. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots. Now we have Rick Joyner, who is looking for these very moral people to be part of his elite group. So he calls on Todd Bentley. Todd Bentley, I won't even, uh, I won't even get into this guy. Uh, we've done several things on him. YouTube Todd Bentley, you'll find out what kind of person he is. And oh, by the way, here is a picture of Todd Bentley, and I've, I've. Uh, highlighted a certain part. He, you know, he's got tattoos all over his body. Well, one of the tattoos that he has is a pair of dog tags that says Joel's Army on them. Here we have Peter Wagner. Peter Wagner is the founder of Global Harvest Ministries, one of the, uh, one of the founders of the, uh, the vineyard movement, one of those popular movements that's going on. The whole vineyard movement is Kingdom Now, Dominion Theology, Joel's Army, and all of this stuff. Uh, Peter Wagner's website had something called Uncovering the Hidden Realm of Glory. You'll start noticing that a lot of these groups talking about finding this new secret, uncovering this hidden thing. That is the lost symbol. That is the Aquarian Conspiracy. That is Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma. That is all of these things. They all talking about this great secret that when it's opened up, it's just going to blow everybody away and turn everybody into God. Did I mention that one of the names for the Joel's Army people is called the New Breed? Basically, it teaches that people are going to, that these spirit-filled apostolic Christians, these Joel Army, they're going to become gods and they're going to take over the world by force. He wrote a book called Dominion, How Kingdom Action can change the world. He's associated with a guy by the name of John Wimber, who was one of the founders of the Vineyard Movement, which is all about kingdom and dominion theology. One of the most popular churches in the Vineyard Movement is the Toronto Airport Church, John and Carol Arnott. This is one. Let me, let me show you how this works. I don't know, I don't remember the guy who brought it to John Arnott, but some guy, I think he was from England, brought over this manifestation, this impartation to John Arnott. He laid hands on him and all of a sudden this weird stuff started happening. John brought it into his church, the Toronto uh, Fellowship Church, uh, the Toronto Airport Church, and all of a sudden you have what's called the Toronto Blessing. You have all of this manifestations going on, all of this weird stuff, people gyrating their bodies, people who have lost, literally lost control over their bodies. They had no function whatsoever. Drunkenness and laughter and all of this stuff. This then sprinkled down to um, the Pensacola, Florida church, the Brownsville Assembly of God. So you have the Toronto blessing. Now you have the uh, Pensacola outpouring. And you have all, I mean, some of the weirdest stuff that you have ever seen in your life is going on here. And they call it revival. They, but what this is, it's a manifestation of familiar spirits given as a result of these reiki impartations. I'm telling you, be careful about who lays hands on you. Um, there was a uh, minister's conference at the Brownville Assembly of God that was interestingly entitled, Articles of War. These people believe that they are soldiers and going to be super soldiers. Let's see, what was Adolf Hitler working on? Back in World War II, he was working on the concept of a super soldier. The Pentagon right now, we've been reading articles all week long, the Pentagon right now is working and funding um, experiments, technology of T-34 
tissues that will, that will never die. The ability to create a super soldier is what Hitler was working on. It's what the Pentagon is working on now. And oh, by the way, you have all these dominion churches now that believe that one of these days a mega burst of the Holy Ghost is going to come on everybody, turn these people into gods, and they'll be the super soldiers of the last days. They will literally be unstoppable. As I mentioned before, it's called by various names. Uh, the Latter Rain Movement, Joel's Army Movement, the Manifest, oh, get this, the manifest sons of God. Now, they say that this is taken from the book of Romans, where we shall be manifest as the sons of God. I think there's something else here. Let's take our Bibles, our King James Bibles. I'll be using the King James translation today. Genesis chapter 6, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, who is that? That's not, it's not these guys. The sons of God, they were the angelic realm. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men were fair, and they took them wives of all which they choose. Verse 4, And there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became, now listen to this phrase, mighty men, which were of old men of renown. That which was is that which shall be. The manifest sons of God ideology, basically they're going to manifest the sons of God here on this earth, creating a hybrid race, a superman race. You remember that uh, idea of Kundalini, uh, the song that, um, uh, what, what, group, what rock, rock group was it called? The Serpent is Rising. They were talking about a superman race. This is all where this is headed, folks. The manifest sons of God, the latter rain movement, and all of this stuff. Now I'm going to take you to the website of a church. The Wasilla Assembly of God. The Wasilla Assembly of God is in Wasilla, Alaska. It is an assembly of God that is a major mover and shaker in the whole latter reign, son, manifest sons of God, Joel's army movement. In fact, you go to their website today, they are advertising a conference called The View. I, here I see the all-seeing eye here. The View, a conference of supernatural perspective. And oh, look who's going to be there. Our buddy Rick Joyner. The Knights of Malta underneath the Roman Catholic Church being led by Mystery Babylon the Great, the uh, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And guess who was a member, a proud member, of the Wasilla Assembly of God Church and actually got her calling and her anointing at this church. Here's a clip that I'm going to show you of Sarah Palin while she was governor of the state of Alaska. She is, um, she is standing uh, and addressing, let me see if I can bring in here. She is standing and addressing a group of young people that have graduated from a class. And th this is all about training these young people that were graduating from a class called the Master's Commission, which I think that she went through in her younger years at that church. I may be wrong, but I think so. But anyway, Sarah Palin claims to be under the umbrella of this church. You'll hear her say that. She says, I grew up in this church and nothing freaks me out about the worship service. And I'm going to show you just a little bit of the worship service that they do there. Um, and I'm going to show you the promotional video of the Master's Commission uh, class that they have that she was a part of and you'll hear him talk about God's plan for Alaska the United States and the entire world this is Joel's army at its best take a look at these clips it was so cool growing up in this church and getting saved here getting baptized by Pastor Riley and Little Beaver Lake Camp freezing cold summer days that we had at camp um, my whole family getting baptized when we were little and um I want to tell the Master's Commission students that uh, just be amazed. Um, the, the umbrella of this church here, where God is going to send you from this church. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Um, where God has sent me from underneath the, the umbrella of this church throughout the state. And we welcome you to our worship service. And now don't be surprised if maybe a parishioner or two may want to raise their hands or clap. And I say... I grew up at Wasilla Assembly of God. Nothing freaks me out about the worship service. Thank you so much. God bless you. Amen.
Praise God. In Alaska, a time of immense darkness. Has a different idea. God is invading Alaska. Master's Commission must in Alaska has one purpose to know God and to make him known. God has a destiny for the state of Alaska. We make Master's Commission is one of the keys in God's plan for Alaska, the United States, and the entire world. Walk away, chain. <laughs> Master's Commission, Wasilla, Alaska. To know God and to make Him known. Now, I'm not Sarah Palin's judge. I'm not the jury that's going to convict her or acquit her. I can't tell you that she's saved or not saved. But I think anybody associated with this idea, ideology and this concept, it appears to me, it appears to me that she has been set up to be what she is right now. Will she run for president? More than likely. I might be wrong. But I will tell you that things like this alert me. They get me worried about what's going on in this world and how things are turning out. And I think that there is definitely a plan afoot to use the fundamental right-wing Christian movement in this country to bring all these things about, to establish this new world uh, and this new world order. Um, here's the scary part. Um, I'm going to read a verse here, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4. We've talked about this in our Bible study. But I'm going to read a verse here, um, and, I, and I, I believe this verse. For the time, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17, For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And I believe that. I absolutely believe that. And I believe that God is going to judge His church. I think the process is starting now. I think the process of God judging the harlot churches and calling his people out uh, of these denominations and so on, I think that process has started. But I will tell you that judgment belongs to God. This Joel's army concept has taken this whole thing and twisted it completely around. One of their proponents, a man by the name of, by the name of Jack Deere, talks about the bloody slaughter on the church by Joel's army. I'm telling you that these people have it in their mind that they are going to be the executioners of people like you and I to get us out because we're not full of the Holy Ghost and we don't prophesy and we don't speak in tongues and we don't manifest laughter and call it the Spirit. We're not drunk enough for them. Here's what Jack Deere also says. How is God going to bring judgment upon his church and then judgment upon the land after his church? He's going to do it with a large and mighty army. Begin the slaughter and begin it in the temple and begin it with the elders and the leaders of my people. And they walk through the land and they start and they begin to slaughter. And you know God has already started that. He has already started with the biggest names in his household. He has already started the slaughter. And in his coming now among the church, he'll start with the leaders, but he'll move out into the church. That's why when he says in verse 2, it is not a day of rejoicing and happiness. It's a day of darkness and gloom. It's a day of clouds and blackness, like dawn spreading across the mountains. You really want the day of the Lord to come? Woe to you, woe to you who long for the day of the Lord. That day will be darkness and not light. And I'm telling you, this is a setup. I have suspected for a long time that the persecution that I believe is coming down the road to those who still believe the old time way and the old Bible and the old way of salvation and they're not falling for all this new drunken spirit nonsense that's going on, the persecution against us is not going to come from the government. won't have to. It's going to come from people like this. It's already happening. How many of you, how many of you have been in your church for years and we either forced out or you were asked to leave your church because you weren't going along with what was going on. They talk about the new breed. This new breed is an elite group of believers endowed with supernatural power that would enable them to be part of this army of dread warriors 
that God uh, has said to be raising up in our generation. According to John Wimber, this is a type of Joel's army who will overcome all opposition uh, to the gospel and eventually subdue the nations. This teaching is part of what is known as Dominion Theology, which teaches that an elite army of overcomers will either destroy or subdue all the enemies of Christ until they eventually gain power and authority throughout the world. The government of the nations will be upon their shoulders. Man, that is blasphemy. And when all the secular, that is from Isaiah 9, and that's to Christ. When the government of the nations will be upon their shoulders, and when all secular authorities, governments, princes, and kings have finally submitted to them, Christ will return, and they will present the kingdom to him. Now, I'm going to deal with scripture now. I've been waiting for this part. I'm going to show you the absolute heresy, and I'm going to show you the setup that goes along with this whole concept of Joel's army. I appreciate what several of you have sent to me. So, Pastor Mike, we used to be part of this. We started seeing things in the Bible. We started seeing things in your videos. And we're out. I want to encourage you that if you are part of this or have been part of it, come out. Come out. I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove to you what Joel's army really is. And I want to, I want to show you this. God, God does. He has an army. And everybody says, well, we're God's army. God's got two armies. God's always in control of everything. He's in control of Lucifer, is he not? Can he not hold him back? Can he not let him go? Then God is in charge. God was in charge of Pharaoh's army, and I'm going to show you that. God was in charge of Pharaoh's army, and don't doubt it for a second. But I'm going to show you Joel's army from the Bible. Let's go to the book of Joel, chapter 1, verse 3. Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. I want you to remember that word, locust. So we have palmer worm and locust, and that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten. So we have three of them now. And that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. That's four. When we see these things, and go read the rest of this chapter, you're going to see some things. You're going to see that this is not a good thing. You're going to see these four. When we talk about the number four, we are always talking about Ephesians 6, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I can tell you that those four aspects of, of the devil's kingdom are trying to consume everything. They've consumed the denominations, have they not? They've consumed the Bible from off the face of the earth nearly. The, the, the record of the King James still stands, but they have consumed the Bible. They've consumed the Spirit. They've consumed the new wine is cut off. Go read Joel chapter 1. From the lips of these prophets and preachers and pastors all over the world, the new wine is cut off as a result of principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in high places. This, in effect is a description of what Daniel saw in Daniel chapter 2. He said, The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron. I want you to remember that. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. This is the army now. This is God has an army. Go read in the book of Jeremiah as he describes this army for you and he refers to them as coming from the north country. That's not Russia. The north country is indicative of the spiritual realm. This is where they're coming from and they are an undefeatable, by humanity, they are an undefeatable army. So look at Joel chapter 1 verse 6. For a nation has come upon my land strong and without number. The Bible talks about the innumerable company of angels. Strong and without number. Whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. And he hath the cheek teeth of a great lion. Now we're going to go to Revelation chapter 9. We're going to see that the beast is going to rise up. We're going to see the key is going to unlock the pit. The abyss. And remember what comes out? Locusts. And how are these locusts described? Revelation chapter 9 verse 8. And they had hair as the hair of women. And their teeth were as the teeth of lions. This uh, vision that Joel saw of this mighty nation coming up. Was not 
the super energized, super duper Dino Wappen Christians that are taking over the earth for Jesus Christ. It's that horde of devils, that, those angels that left their first estate that are locked in the, in the pit. He's describing their physical appearance for you. And they, Joel's army and this army both have the teeth of lions. By the way, they have the hair of women as well. Remember Absalom? He was a type of the beast who was thrown into a pit, who was hanging from a tree, who had the hair of a woman. Back to Joel chapter 2. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Remember the trumpets. It's in Revelation 9 that you see the trumpets blowing. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds. Remember the clouds. And of thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong, here it is, there hath not been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness, yea, and nothing shall escape them. That is, that is a perfect image of of Revelation chapter 9. The bottomless pit is open. We see the fire and the smoke ascending out of there. And I will tell you that watch all these uh, latter day rain websites and all these prophecy websites and these churches that use flame and fire as their logo. I think something's, I think there's a connection there. So he says in verse 4, Joel 2, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen, so shall they run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. So here in this verse we have the appearance of horses and chariots and flames of fire and consumption and all of this stuff. Now let's go back to Revelation chapter 9. The fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose out of the pit uh, a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace, the burning. And the sun and air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Joel mentioned that. And unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And verse 7 says, And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses. Horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as, I love this, their faces were as the faces of men. You know, which led Hal Lindsey and some others to believe that this was, you know, a Apache attack helicopters. You know, John didn't know what he was seeing. This is attack helicopters that are going to come from Russia and kill us all. Well, I think he was wrong. This, this evil legion of God's army coming up out of the pit to execute judgment upon planet earth and these locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle Deuteronomy and I love this they have faces of men and I love this Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 17 says you shall not respect persons in judgment but you shall hear the small as well as the great and you shall not be afraid of the face of man and I won't be afraid of these people it's not that I, and those of you who get to know me, I'm a scaredy cat. I'm a little sissy. I don't like confronting people. I don't like getting in fights. I don't like getting hurt. I don't like getting punched. I, by my nature, am afraid of the faces of men. When I sit in church, when I'm preaching in church and I can tell someone's not happy with me, but I will tell you, that I believe that that day, or in any situation where there is danger, where there could be fear, I believe God will give His people perfect peace. Revelation 9, 9, and they had the breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. Remember the iron? The iron kingdom that's coming. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of, here it is, chariots, of many horses running to battle. Joel and Revelation are hand in hand here. That's the army that God is describing that's going to take over in those days. If the sons of God people say that they're a part of that army, think about it. Joel chapter 2 verse 6, Before their face the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness and they shall run like what? 
mighty men. That's exactly where the offspring of the sons of God and the daughters of men. It was the mighty men. And they shall climb the wall like men of war and they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. And see this whole Joel's army thing, they claim this to be them. They said, we're going to be the super people. Nobody can hurt us. Neither shall one thrust another and they shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. And they shall run to and fro in the city. And they shall run upon the wall and they shall climb upon the houses. And they shall enter in the windows like a what? Like a thief. Um, let me show you John chapter 10 verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Verse 10 he says, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's the destroyer, the thief and the murderer. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Folks, we're just using the scripture. We're comparing scripture with scripture. They say they're going to come in the windows like a thief. And Jesus said, Now if you see anybody coming in the window like a thief... That's not the Son of Man, and those people are not like the Son of Man. The Son of Man comes to save. The thieves come to steal and to kill and to destroy. We're not Joel's army. Joel chapter 2, 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. His, his army is what he said. This army belongs to God. You say, well, they're the enemies of God. God controls them all, people. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? And I told you a while ago I was going to show you Pharaoh was also, in fact, Pharaoh was a picture of God's army. And I want you to look this, Exodus chapter 14, verse 9. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh. That is exactly what we see in Joel chapter 2. That is exactly what we see in Revelation chapter 9. God is showing you in picture form and giving you the word pictures in the King James Bible. This is why we have so many of these variant doctrines and these sons of God and these wackos coming out on the scene. Why? Because they've taken this old King James and they've, they've amplified it. They said, well, you know, the original Hebrew it said this, or a better translation is this. This is why we have what we have today. This is why most of the churches are against us. Because we stand for the Word of God, and they... That can keep you out of hell, and it's the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus.